Hello and welcome to July's edition of Quick Squash Tips. I've got 14 solo practice exercises for you to try out. Now these were originally posted on Instagram. On Instagram I post on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays and then I collate them into a video, the one that you're watching now. So if you haven't seen the previous five, go check those out. There's plenty of tips for you to use there. Now, in addition to the quick squash tips that I post Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays, I also post photos of rackets that I might be testing or other things that I've found. So if you're an Instagram user, you can find me by searching for squash coach Philip, one word, or I'll probably just put the link in the base down here. Now, I will be making a separate video about the targets that you see listed in some of these uh, short clips here. But in addition, I'll also be making a separate line exercises video. Instagram allows you to make one minute videos and that's great because it helps you focus. But at the same time, I want to make sure that I explain things properly and give you proper progressions. So look out for both of those videos in the near future. So there won't be any uh, quick squash tips videos or probably much content in July on Instagram because I'm taking a holiday. Come on, everybody needs a break away from what they're doing so that they can come back with renewed energy. And that's it, I don't think I've got anything else to tell you, so let's get started. Start by taping, with the court owner's permission of course, a piece of paper about A4 in length, just below halfway between the cut line and the tin. The color should be clearly visible, so red works really well. Stand about halfway between the front wall and the short line. Begin by hitting some shots only below the paper. Then continue hitting shots only above the paper. When you are comfortable, hit one above and one below the paper alternately. It's not particularly difficult, but the benefit comes from simply attempting to do it consistently. When that feels easier, move back behind the short line. Advanced players should aim to keep the ball inside the width of the paper. It's not shown here, but you could add another piece of paper and place it so that you divide the space between the cut line and tin into three even areas and hit each area in turn. I've only shown the forehands, but obviously do both sides. Following on from Monday's solo practice, take the strip of paper and tape it vertically. Then, as I'm sure you guessed, Try to hit it on the left and right of the paper. However, immediately you will notice this is way harder than the above and below version. The best thing to do now is to hit two shots on the left and then two on the right and so forth. The next progression would be one on the left, then two on the right or vice versa. The final progression for advanced players is alternately left and right but you have to be very skilled to do more than 12 in a row without running across most of the court. The further away from the wall you stand, the harder it is. Don't forget to hit both sides, forehand and backhand. There's not much more for me to say, except try it. It doesn't take a genius to guess that for today's video, we are combining the two previous ideas into one, the cross. Ideally, you would have longer pieces of paper or even ribbon, but all that matters is that when the ball hits the wall, it is clear which quadrant it is in. Having four areas allows you to play a variety of games with the placement. You can go around the clock, both clockwise and counterclockwise. You can just work on diagonal opposites or any combination you want. This is quite a difficult exercise and don't be surprised if it is harder than you first expected. As with the previous two solo practices, the further away you are from the front wall, the harder it is. And again, don't neglect to do your backhand side. I haven't shown it here, but all these three exercises can be performed alone or with a partner, both cooperatively and competitively. For one of June's videos, I highlighted the ability to angle straight drives into the corners. I suggested practicing it, and here is that practice. Instead of simply hitting the ball as tight to the wall as possible, hit some shots about a service box width away from the wall. 
You can see I even put some tape on the floor to keep me focused. I then try to hit the ball accurately into the corner. What often happens is that you will hit the ball slightly too angled and it will hit the side wall early, potentially leaving an easy shot for your opponent. I'll be honest and say I was only accurate about 50% of the time and if I still played competitive squash, this would be unacceptable. Sometime in the future, I'll be making a more detailed video, but for now, try to hit the front wall just to the left of the center of the service box width. Squash has more geometry than people sometimes realize. I was lucky enough to practice with Kamazaman a couple of times. He's an ex-world number one and winner of the British Open in 1975. He was considered the best touch player of his era. He used to practice what you see me doing now, but with a broken ball. He believed it developed a better feeling. Of course, he also used a normal hot ball too. As you can see, I'm playing soft, short shots, and not only am I trying to keep the ball tight, but I'm also moving it around in the corner. You also see me hitting some high shots too. This is to practice getting under the ball, and also to be able to play against those types of shots. You can alternate this exercise with some hard hitting to keep the ball hot. Don't forget to spend a little longer on your weaker side. You rarely see club players practicing anything like this, and they should. I would love to get lower, but with my bad hips, I'm happy to be able to get this low. I'm sure you can do better. Fast hands is a phrase you often hear used to describe racket sports players and boxers. In racket sports, it refers to the ability to control the racket head to hit shots other players find impossible. It's the ability to adapt to the unusual or unexpected placement of the ball and still have control over where the ball goes. The exercise you see me doing now will help you improve that ability. It won't make a master out of a novice, but it will improve whatever ability you were born with. It's not just about the physical ability to move your arm, wrist and racket, it's about your reaction time and response. Stand facing the wall with your arm straight out in front of you with your racket touching the front wall. Then take a step back, start hitting the ball from the forehand to backhand on the volley. If that's too hard, then let it bounce. Aim to do 20 with no mistakes, then increase the speed you hit the ball. The real benefit comes from hitting lots of shots fast with no mistakes. I should have recorded this from the side. Sorry about that. I've shown this exercise before, but I feel it's worth showing again. This exercise develops one aspect of touch, the ability to generate just the right amount of speed from a dead ball. I highly recommend not touching this ball with your hands. This will require you to pick up the ball and position it only with the racket, which itself helps control. I'll be explaining the target in a future video, but until then, you can use a large piece of paper taped to the floor and sidewall. Your objective is to hit the nick, but the reality is that if you can get it in the target area during an actual match, that would be great. You're aiming to hit the front wall quite low, but preferably not centimeters above the tin, as that's too risky. And depending on where you are on the court and how high the ball is when you make contact with it, about a racket's length away from the sidewall. It's not easy, at least at first, but if you practice this, your level of control will improve and your ability to win points from the mid and the front of the court. This exercise is a progression from the previous one. It doesn't so much as improve touch, but it continues the theme of control. In the previous exercise, I was trying to generate very little speed onto the ball. This time, I'm hitting it quite firmly. The same principles apply about hitting the target area and not hitting too close to the tin. Your objective is to hit the nick, but also to make contact with the ball much higher than in the previous exercise. There's no doubt in my mind that this is a much harder exercise than the last. It requires more accuracy because you are hitting the ball harder. Any badly timed shot and it may bounce high, giving your opponent an easier return. Do not start this exercise by hitting the ball very, very hard. Get somewhat accurate before you increase the speed. However, this shot requires a minimum amount of power, otherwise it becomes a drop volley, not a volley kill.
And here we are with part three of this week's theme, developing touch. Hitting the ball from a dead position, that is not coming towards you, is certainly not particularly representative of a real game, but training is not always about recreating game situations. Sometimes we need to focus on specific aspects or even exaggerate things. As with the previous two exercises, avoid picking the ball up with your hands and let your racket head do the work. Your objective is to hit the ball as close to the side wall as possible and quite low. I'll talk about the target ribbons another time. Again, as with the previous two exercises, it's not so much whether you can actually hit perfect shots, more that you're trying to improve your touch, feel and control of the ball. Don't forget to do your backhand. A few weeks ago, I showed you the above and below, left and right, and the cross routines. For this week's videos, we'll be doing more or less the same, but this time using the targets on the floor and the wall. For today, I want you to place some tape on the floor as shown. I use ribbon because it's light, reusable, and cheap. Please ignore the ribbon on the front wall for now. I've put it in the exact center, but if you're a coach, you could put two pieces in line with the service box and have two players doing the routine at the same time, or even three if you use the side wall as the front wall. You could use the actual lines of the service box, but I found that it works best closer to the front wall. Your objective is to hit two shots on one side of the ribbon and then two shots on the other side. This routine will help develop what I call timing control, where you need to make contact with the ball either a little earlier or a little later to make the ball move to one side or the other. The important aspect, at least when you first start to do this, is not whether you can do it, but that you try to do it. Don't forget to watch the ball hit your strings and do forehand and backhand. Let me start by saying that I've made a mistake and unfortunately I have no possibility of re-recording the footage due to travel plans. Details are in the text description. What you see me trying to do here is a progression from the previous routine. Here, I'm trying to hit one shot below the line on the front wall and on the right hand side of the line on the floor and then one shot above the line on the front wall and on the right hand side of the line on the floor. Then, I'm going to move to the left side of the line on the floor and again, hit one shot above the line on the front wall and one below, and so on. Phew, it sounds more complicated than it actually is. There are variations where you hit above or below first, where you hit both shots left and right, below then above, but the point is you select the pattern and try to do it perfectly. All of these line exercises aim to improve your basic level of ball control. As with the other shots, don't forget to watch the ball hit your strings and do forehand and backhand. So, as you can see, we've reached the floor cross stage. If you have watched my previous videos, then you can surely guess what you need to do. Your objective is to hit each consecutive shot so that it hits in a different part of the cross area. I have shown a simple around the clock version, but I'm sure you can invent a few variations. If you feel more comfortable, do two shots in each area. That will allow you to make the next shot a little easier. Being able to hit the ball where you want it, when you want it, is the core and foundation of controlling a rally and an opponent. Being able to hit clean, accurate and parallel returns of serve straight along the wall is very important. It's not the only type of service return you should be able to hit, but it will almost certainly be 80% of the returns you do hit. Stand near the corner of the service box and aim up high on the front wall and block the ball on the volley. Your position and timing are so important. Ideally, your back should be pointing towards the opposite front corner. This will mean you are turning your shoulders properly. Don't try to hit the ball too hard. As long as you hit it cleanly and high, it should get to the back corner area. Of course, you want to hit it parallel to the wall and tight if possible. To do that, you must make contact with the ball near the wall. Confidence is key here. 
and the best way to build confidence is to do it alone first. As with all the shots this month, don't forget to watch the ball hit your strings and do forehand and backhand. You might have thought that practicing service returns on your own would be impossible, and you're not completely wrong. What you see me doing is probably as close as you can get though. Starting in more or less the same position as the last video, but instead of hitting high straight volleys back to yourself, you hit a ball from near the middle of the court widthwise, and then try to block it parallel to the wall. You will find that if you get the first shot angled just right, it can be quite difficult to return well. Add some variation if you want, just to keep things interesting. I fully accept that most viewers will have a training partner they can do these sorts of things with, but not everybody has, and sometimes we have to train and practice alone. The backhand service return block is one of my weaknesses, and I know that doing this exercise as a cool down after a tough, solo hitting training session is probably a great idea. As with all the shots this month, don't forget to watch the ball hit your strings and do forehand and backhand. There won't be any Instagram videos in August because I'm on holiday. See you in September. If you think the content of my videos is useful, please consider subscribing to my channel and turn on notifications. This is a playlist of the technical aspects of squash, which probably interests you if you've watched this video. This is a video that YouTube thinks is a really good fit for you. Thanks for watching, and remember, do something every single day to improve your squash. See ya!